So, you want to get your drone pilot license in Canada so you can make videos like this. I'm going to show you how to ace the exam with less than two hours of preparation. Stick with me to find out how. getting by passing the exam is referred to as a basic RPAS pilot certificate. RPAS being Remotely Piloted Aircraft Systems. The certificate allows you to fly any remotely piloted aircraft ranging from 250 grams to 25 kilograms and it's not limited to just quadcopter drones. The exam costs only $10 to write and all of this can be done in the comfort of your own home in just a couple hours. In the description down below are all of the resources you're going to need for the exam. Now, I'm going to quickly introduce you to each document so that you'll know exactly how to use each one during the test. The first page I suggest you look at is directly from Transport Canada, and it's called Knowledge Requirements for Pilots of Remotely Piloted Aircraft Systems. It's a mouthful, but this document outlines the structure of the exam, the range of topics that will be covered, and breaks down what to expect within each topic. I suggest reading the first few paragraphs at the top, then maybe gloss through the Knowledge Areas section. But don't spend too much time reading through the rest of this document. The next document, the Canadian Aviation Regulations Part 9, is by far the most important, and the only one where I suggest you actually read through the entire section. This document contains all the rules you need to follow when flying your drone, including maximum altitude, flying near bystanders, flying restricted airspace, and even what's required if you want to fly FPV with goggles like this. I'm not going to walk you through all the details. The information is there, and you should read through it. When you open the link in your browser, I suggest hitting Ctrl F on your keyboard and typing Part IX into the search bar. This will take you directly to Part 9 of the CAR document, which is a very small part of a much larger document, but it's the only section of the CAR that you'll need to study as a drone pilot. I know, it seems a bit long, but you can get through it in under an hour if you focus, and this document really does contain important information that you'll need to know in order to pass the test and to become a responsible Canadian drone pilot. There are five more documents in the list, all of which you want to have open and ready during the test. All you need to do is simply familiarize yourself with the type of information each document contains so that you'll know where to look when answering a particular question. The AIM, or Aeronautical Information Manual, contains a ton of information about things like aircraft procedures, radar, weather, communications, the list goes on. Just have this document ready when you're writing the test. The Canada Flight Supplement contains specific information regarding actual airports and flight service stations, as well as the radio frequency bands that they communicate on. The Advisory Circular document from Transport Canada contains many terms, some of which you might need a definition for during the test. The VFR Phraseology document contains radio communication terms, as well as instructions and procedures on how to communicate over radio. And finally, the Drone Dictionary contains, as you might have guessed, terms and definitions about drone stuff. Once again, all the links you need are in the description down below. Your lifeline during the test, if you need one, is your good old friend Google. After all, this is an open book exam. The test is 35 multiple choice questions, you have 90 minutes to write it, and you need a 65% to pass. I finished in 45 minutes and scored 94%. If I can do it, so can you. Don't forget, you also need to register your drone before flying. If you found this video helpful, consider hitting the like button and subscribe if you want to see more content in the future. That's it for now. Good luck on the test and happy flying.